Well, welcome to Easter Sunday, Byford Baptist Church. Sometimes it's called Resurrection Sunday, which is probably more appropriate. It's a good thing for us to gather together. Even though we're physically distant, we are actually gathering together in unity as a as a church. We're unified in Christ. And um, we're going to sing about that today. We're going to sing songs of joyful declaration of who Jesus is and what he has accomplished for all mankind This day um, of Jesus' resurrection is a great joy and we can let our hearts be glad and rejoice this morning. doesn't matter if we're at home in our lounge room, but um, we can still let the joy rise in our hearts. So if you feel like standing, you can stand. If you want to sit, of course, you can do that. If you want to kneel, sometimes that's a nice thing to do um, when you're worshipping or If you've got a bit of energy, you can dance as well. So whatever, (laughs) we're not looking at you. (laughs) But we're going to start this morning. I'm just going to actually read um, from Romans chapter 6 to help us to focus. And it's Romans 6, 4 to 10. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him, so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, and that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin." Now if we died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. For we know that since Christ was raised from the dead, he cannot die again. Death no longer has mastery over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. That's great news. Let's sing together. Mediator. And this is just a great song that um, reminds us what Jesus has done and who he is. So let's sing together. Salvation. 
Jesus is our mediator. I certainly hope everyone is clapping at home too. Yes. Hello. <laughs> now we're going to sing about the hope that Jesus has brought because he has risen. He has risen indeed.
the hope that you have given us because you didn't stay in the grave you rose again on the third day just as you said you would Lord we rejoice in that we rejoice in your resurrection today today. Not many, <laughs> but because everything is in a different phase at the moment, um, we're just asking if you guys uh, need to update your email or um, any of your contact details just to send that through to Isabel, give her a call or a text or email um, so that we can keep up to date with um, how we can contact you and you can contact us. 
Um, given this time of um, social distancing, distancing I call it, not isolation. We're not to be isolated. <laughs> But um, the work of the gospel still is a very strong part of what we do at Byford Baptist. Even though we don't physically see each other during the week, there is still um, opportunity for that. And so um, with that, we do need to continue our giving as if it was normal church. So we really strongly um, recommend that you, uh, if you haven't before, change over to internet banking um, and do organise your giving online somehow. But if you're struggling with that and finding it a little bit tricky, um, just contact Isabel at the office on the office at bifordbaptist.org email. There have been a few important emails sent around with messages from the elders about how things are going to move forward at this time while Shane is on leave. Make sure you take time to read them. They've got lots of information and encouragement in them. And don't forget to read the one from Frank. He was very frank in his email and (laughs) it was very encouraging. Thanks, Frank. Um, Ladies Bible study is actually going to just be in recess over the school holiday, so that's two weeks off, and then we'll start that back up again in Term 2. We're doing that via Zoom, and that's open to any of the ladies in the church. Um, food market is still happening on Thursday, so between 11 and 12, if you need some food or if um, if you know of somebody who needs some food, you can help out with uh, getting them some food or let them know to come down to the church. That's still happening on Thursdays. Uh, the junior church team have been working really hard to get some online content up for the kids, so make sure you check that out. There'll be a spot in the church's YouTube channel where those videos are going to go. So um, just check that out and enjoy what they have done. They've worked really hard and done a great job. So thanks, junior church team. We're going to just turn our attention to prayer at the moment and um, uplift and uphold to the Lord the needs that we have as a body of believers. So will you bow your heads and close your eyes and let's just uh, give our attention to God as we as we pray for these things. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne. We rejoice that you have risen indeed. Lord, how how foolish would our faith be if you did not believe if we if you did not rise again as you promised. But because you did, our faith is full of hope and secure. And we just thank you for that. Lord, we uplift the needs of our congregation to you at this time. It's a great time of uh, adjustment and Adapting frequently to all the changes that are going on in society, it's been rapid and dramatic, Lord, and we find ourselves staying in our homes a lot more than we usually would, staying away from people a lot more than we usually would. And Lord, I just pray that you would give us as a congregation here at Byford Baptist the strength and um Just the love in our hearts would be strong, the faith in you, our hope would be in you during this time. That even though we don't understand what's happening and why it's happened at this time, Lord, you you knew and it can still be for your glory. So we pray that we would be found giving you glory during this time. Lord, we uplift Shane to you this morning together as a body And pray for his healing and restoration, that you would give him rest and strength over this time. Lord, that he would know the hope of the calling that you have placed on his life. And that um, he would find great joy in your presence, in your word, and just in the quiet times. That he would regain strength. Lord, we think of our elders as they lead us during this time. Pray that you would give them strength and wisdom and courage. Lord, it wasn't a surprise to you that they would need to step up at this time, Lord, but but you will give them all that they need 
to serve the congregation in leadership over this time. Lord, we deeply thank you for Dave and for Mike for being available to help at this time with with um, some of the teaching and preaching, Lord. That is a blessing to our congregation. Lord, you, you knew and you had these men ready for us at this time and we acknowledge that and give you glory. Lord, for those in our congregation who are suffering sickness, Lord, it may be uh, colds and flus or it may be something like cancer or uh, diabetes. Anyone who's struggling with these ongoing illnesses, Lord, we pray for healing. Lord, we pray for those who are undergoing treatment that it won't be disrupted during this time, that they would have peace and comfort knowing that you are God. Lord, we pray for those who perhaps are feeling lonely and isolated, that your comfort would be known greatly to them. Lord, we pray for those who may be lonely, feeling lonely and isolated in our community of Byford and the surrounding areas, that you would also be their comfort. Father, that they would know in their hearts that if they need to, they can reach out to someone who cares. Father, may we as a church recognise the need in our community and be there to help and support in any way that we can. Lord, we pray for the leaders of our community as they figure out how how they can uh, support people in the area during this time, Lord, where not much actual activities can happen that would normally be the support but may Byford just rally together at this time and, and be strong for one another. Lord, we pray for our Premier. We just pray that through this time you would guide and lead him. Lord, we do pray that he would recognise you during this time in glimpses here and there, Father, that he would see the hand of God at work. Lord, we thank you for our Prime Minister who is doing a lot of hard work, a hard, exhausting work, leading the country in a time of great crisis, Lord. No one could have predicted this. May you give him strength, wisdom. May you give him rest as well. Keep his mind alert And may he find strength in you and your word at this time. Lord, we give you glory in and through all of this. It is your name to be exalted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue in our time of worship, of singing. But before we do that, I just wanted to continue on from Good Friday. We read out Luke 23 and the events up to the crucifixion. But from Luke 24, it tells of the resurrection. So I'm going to read that out to you. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. But they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners to be crucified and on the third day be raised again. They remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James and the others with them who told this to the apostles. 
But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves and he went away wondering to himself what had happened. We know what had happened. He was not there because he was risen. Hallelujah. Let's sing together in Christ alone. My hope is found, our hope is found in the risen Lord Jesus. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace When fears are stilled, when striving cease My comforter, my all in all Here in the love of Christ I stand of God in helpless pain, this gift of love and righteousness, scorned by the ones he came to save, till on the cross as Jesus died, the wrath of God was satisfied, for every sin on him was laid. Here in the death of Christ I live There in the ground His body lay Light of the world by darkness slain Then bursting forth in glorious day up from the grave he rose again And as he stands in victory Since Christ has lost his grip on me For I am his and he is mine Walk with the precious blood of Christ is the power of Christ in me, from life's first cry to final breath, Jesus commands my destiny, no power of hell, no scheme of man, can ever block me from his hand, till he returns, oh cause me home. of salvation that Jesus come and die and pay that price but then rise again on the third day as foretold God through this you are our salvation you always had a way of salvation for us for me and pulled me from the raging sea and I am safe 
on this solid ground. The Lord is my salvation. I will not fear when darkness falls. His strength will help me scale these walls. I see the dawn of the rising. Lord is my salvation. Who is like the Lord? Who is like the Lord, our God? Strong to stay faithful in love. My debt is paid and the victory won. The Lord is my salvation. Troy's going to 
bring us the Bible reading. Yes, thanks, Mel. The Bible reading is Acts 4, 1 to 2. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. And now we're going to uh, cross to David Juniper, who's going to give us our message. Thanks, Dave. Well, morning, folks. Uh, it is, once again, a rather unusual Resurrection Sunday. But I trust that as we open God's Word together this morning, you will be uh, reminded and encouraged about the hope that we have as Christians. When uh, we were down in the country, and if you've ever lived in the country, one of the things that people wait for at this time of the year is they're waiting for the break of the season. So what happens is uh, from sort of mid-April onwards, every time there's a shower of rain, a, a bit of rainfall, people go, is this just an isolated event or is this the break of the season? It, does this mean that now that uh, the rain has started to fall, from now on we're going to get consistent, um, even though it's intermittent, rain for the rest of the season and we can put our crops in, we can prepare to um, uh, sow the seed for the coming harvest. As you think about that idea, the idea of uh, an isolated shower of rain as against the break of the season, the time when now rain is going to fall consistently, think about that in terms of the resurrection of Jesus. and we, That's going to be brought particularly to our Notice this morning because we're up to chapter 4 in the book of Acts and our few verses that we're focusing on because we're just slowing down over this Easter period to focus in upon these Easter themes, Good Friday, chapter 3, uh, Resurrection Sunday and chapter 4. These just a few verses. These, this is what we read. The priests and the captain of the temple guard and the Sadducees came up to Peter and John while they were speaking to the people. They were greatly disturbed because the apostles were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. They seized Peter and John and because it was evening, they put them in jail until the next day. But many who heard the message believed. So the number of men who believed grew to about 5,000. Now, normally on Resurrection Sunday, we spend time thinking about the resurrection of Jesus. But this morning we're going to begin by thinking about the resurrection in Jesus. Did you catch that? Just as we read it through, they were teaching the people, proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. So let's think about what the resurrection of the dead in Jesus uh, the implications of that. Well, first of all, you might notice that one of the parties that is uh, coming to shut down uh, Peter and John and stop them preaching, one of the parties are the Sadducees. Uh, these are aristocrats. They're people who have particular power and influence. They controlled the temple, and so therefore they controlled uh, the religious establishment. They were cosy with the Romans. Uh, you watch my back, I'll watch yours. Because they were so invested in the status quo, into maintaining order, because they were doing pretty well out of it, that they were prepared to remove any um, upset, to minimise disturbance, because then the Romans would make life difficult for them. Jesus had already cross swords with the Sadducees. You can read about it in Matthew's Gospel. But uh, Luke records it also in Luke chapter 20. The Sadducees came to Jesus and it says that they did not believe in the resurrection. That is, they did not believe that people uh, would be raised bodily from death. There's a... Um, 
A particular reason that comes out in their exchange with Jesus is in the book of Luke. They, they are particularly focused on the first five books in the Bible, the books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And if you know your Old Testament, you, you'll know that the, the understanding of resurrection was something that is revealed uh, in the ongoing story of the people of God. It's not something that's explicit in the first five books of the Bible. However, Jesus, in his interaction with them, drives them back to the, uh, the book of Exodus and says, you know, doesn't God say, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. So um, he is not the God of the dead but the living and so even from their own books, Jesus draws out the implications uh, that the resurrection from the dead is actually something that they should have recognised. Uh, it is, the resurrection of the dead is something that, as I said, is revealed and unfolded through the prog uh, progress of the Old Testament, the story of the Old Testament. And it's founded on particularly a couple of significant things. One is um, the God who has power over all things. He is the giver of life, the one who spoke creation into being, spoke human beings into being, breathed life into human beings. He is the, the author of life. If he is the author of life and he is uh, all-powerful, then surely the logic goes he has power over life and death. Another part of the logic of resurrection in the Old Testament is God's loving faithfulness and commitment to relationship with his people. Jesus has already implied this, um, uh, drawn out this from the implications of Exodus chapter 3. But Psalm 16, that's already been quoted in the book of Acts chapter 2, Psalm 16 is very clear that this resurrection is a bodily resurrection and it's part of God's commitment to those he loves. So listen, Psalm 16, beginning at partway through verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. There are people who suggest that the resurrection is not to be found in the Old Testament. That is a very desperate statement. It is obviously um, present in several places, places like Psalm 16 and the logic of it is God's commitment faithful commitment to those he loves he loves them so much that he their, their his relationship will with them will endure even beyond death as we know it today the other logical uh, reason for resurrection is that it, it is implied in God's justice so one of the things that the Bible, the Old Testament, the rest of the Bible is absolutely clear about is that God is just. He will reward people according to their deeds. To those who are righteous, he will reward their righteousness. To those who are unrighteous, to those who are unjust, to the wicked, he will reward their wickedness. But you and I both know that there are people, good people, who go to the grave in great agony and disappointment. And there are wicked people who go to the grave with pleasure, with comfort. Where is the justice of God, if that is the case? Because God has sworn to repay evil, to reward good. And so the resurrection, which in the Old Testament, mainly focuses upon the resurrection of the righteous to um, 
uh, an ongoing relationship with God, also has this other side which is not so frequent but is nonetheless there. And here, Daniel chapter 12, verse 1 to 3, um, is a, a, an example, very clear example, of what we would call the resurrection. At that time, Michael, the great prince who protects your people, will arise. There will be a time of distress, such as not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake. Some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. The resurrection, as it's unfolded in the Old Testament, is a consequence of God's power, God's faithful love, and his commitment to his justice. So, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection, partly because, for them, uh, they got rid of the bits of the Bible they didn't like, the bits that... Um, particularly focused on resurrection. Um, that's something that people still do, chop bits out of the Bible um, because it's inconvenient. But for many people at the time of Jesus, there was a particular expectation, a looking forward to the day of the resurrection. The day when God would raise people from death, many who sleep in the dust of the earth, where God would raise people bodily from death. He will not allow my body to see decay. It is uh, fascinating that the Bible's view of resurrection is so bodily. It's the body that is raised. Many Greek people, for instance, thought that the goal, uh, the best thing that could happen to you was that your spirit, which is imprisoned in your body, should somehow escape your body. For them, that was the ideal. The body was um, weak and, and physical. What could be better than to be completely spiritual, to ex escape your body? There are many different cultures who have different understandings of resurrection and um, uh, reincarnation, uh, escape, ongoing um, existence in some spiritual form. But the resurrection of the body is an extraordinary thing. And it's part of our recognition that we are embodied creatures, human beings are embodied beings. We belong in a body. Uh, the idea that somehow the best we can look forward to is floating around on a cloud without a body isn't a biblical idea at all. And, it's, and we've come to understand, haven't we, over the last few weeks, how important the body is. I mean, it's nice to be able to Zoom people. It's nice to be able to see our friends doing this sort of thing. But gee whiz... It'll be really lovely when we can give each other a hug again. Bodies are really important. Um, and we'll make the most of all the technology we, we have, but it'll never be a substitute for being with each other in body. And that commitment to the body is the thing that underlies resurrection, the resurrection in the Bible. God's commitment to our ongoing existence as embodied creatures. So that was the resurrection, if you like. That was um, what the, the apostles were preaching. They were proclaiming in Jesus the resurrection of the dead. That is, the resurrection of 
which people were expecting, which people who read things like Deuteronomy 12, um, had actually come into the present. Why? Because of the resurrection of Jesus. So the resurrection of Jesus means that the resurrection is, has now come. The age of resurrection has begun in Jesus and through Jesus. It means that if you want to be part of the resurrection, it means if you want to be one of those who is um, caught up on that last day to eternal pleasures at his right hand, that means you have to be in Jesus because the resurrection is in Jesus. How do we know the resurrection is in Jesus? Because of the resurrection of Jesus. His resurrection is, to go back to our, our thought at the beginning, remember thinking about showers of rain and you can get a shower of rain and in March and another one perhaps in April and then but you're waiting not just for the, the odd showers, you're waiting for the, the shower of rain which marks the beginning, the break of the season. Now it is the time of ploughing. Now is the time to put in the crop. And the resurrection of Jesus, what the apostles are saying is the resurrection of Jesus isn't just some isolated random event. You can actually believe in the resurrection of Jesus as some sort of weird one-off thing and it have no other implications for you. I, I don't know how you do that, but intellectually I think you probably could. But not when you know about the resurrection. That this is something that God has promised, that this is something God intends for human beings. The resurrection of Jesus then becomes the point at which the resurrection enters into human history. Are you waiting for the resurrection? On what basis are you waiting for the resurrection? Well, you must be confronted with the reality of the resurrection and the things that implies. Things like um, God's justice and what it will mean for us beyond the grave. And the reason you need to be persuaded about that, and in fact um, can be persuaded about that, is because of the resurrection of Jesus. The resurrection of Jesus is one of the most um, verifiable, certain historical facts in our world. It is something that is completely grounded in reality, in witness and in truth. It was not done in a corner and it wasn't something, it wasn't some weird um, uh, mystical experience that a few people had. Consistently, it is presented as the um, a, a fact of history, something that happened that was born witness to and testified to by people who are trustworthy. So in, uh, in Acts chapter 3... It says that um, God raised Jesus from the dead. You killed the author of life, chapter 3, verse 15. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses to this. And that witness, if you examine it, if you examine it carefully, that witness is incredibly compelling. If you take the testimony of the apostles recorded for us in the New Testament, recorded for us in the Gospels, if you take the testimony, for instance, of the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15, that summary about the resurrection of Jesus was written within a few years of the first Easter. It wasn't a legend that grew somehow. It was written maybe 8, 10, 15 years later. Very, very close. And Paul didn't make it up. He says, I received it. It was already 
something that was well established in the Christian community through the witness of the apostles. If you look at the testimony of Luke in the book of Luke and the book of Acts, um, then you will be persuaded that Luke is a very, very reliable guide. In the past, there have been people who have questioned Luke's testimony, Luke's record, decided they would investigate it for themselves, got on the boats, walked the trails, visited the cities that Luke writes about and found that he is incredibly reliable. And what the gospel writers record for us is compelling. In fact, later on in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 17, the Apostle Paul, as he's preaching, not this time to Jewish people, but to Greek people. So he's gone to Athens, gone to um, uh, the city um, of Athens, and he says there, he's preaching to them, And at the end of his sermon, he says this, For he has set a day, talking about God, he has set a day when he will judge the world with justice by the man he has appointed. He has given proof of this to everyone by raising him from the dead. When they heard about the resurrection of the dead, some of them sneered, but others said, We want to hear you again on this subject. So there were some people for whom resurrection just was a a crazy category. They weren't even going to think about it. They weren't going to investigate it. It was something that was completely beside the point. And so they just, they said, (laughs) the resurrection. We're Greeks. The best thing for us is to escape the body. Why would we want a resurrection? But there were others. There were people who were thoughtful and and carefully um, wanted to know the truth, and they said, we want to hear you again on this subject. And this morning, um, perhaps you're one of those people. You're not persuaded yet, but you want to make sure of the facts. Can I encourage you to examine the facts about the resurrection of Jesus? Because the, the resurrection of Jesus is the key to the resurrection. It says that not only do we have a shower of rain, but in Jesus, the age of resurrection has come. This is, friends, a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's the reason why in the face of the present crisis, as in many other challenges that Christian people face, the resurrection means that we can be confident because the resurrection um, promises us. It's a pledge for us of the faithful love of God. It's a, a commitment to us that if we are badly treated, if we see no justice in this world, and there are many people who, who are broken because in this world there is no justice, you can, be, uh, you can know, you can have confidence and you do not need to be given over to bitterness. You do not need to be given over to fear because of the resurrection. This is what gives us great confidence and great peace as we face many challenges, not the least the uncertainty of the present situation. So today as we think about the resurrection of Jesus, remember the, it's not just the resurrection of Jesus, but because of his resurrection, the resurrection is now in Jesus. If you want to be part of that great resurrection to life, the place to embrace that, to experience that, to plug into that he is in Jesus. Faith in him, trust in him, love for him, obedience for him, union with him. Friends, it'll be a great day when we can meet together um, and embrace one another.
But in the meantime, um, let's remember, as we mourn the absence of bodily um, embracing and presence, that one day uh, those we love and we ourselves will come to experience bodily resurrection, bodily presence with Jesus. Shall we give thanks for that in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. Thank you so much for the hope of the resurrection. Thank you for um, the peace that we come through the resurrection because we can be persuaded that justice will be done ultimately. Thank you for hope, joy, peace. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus something which is uh, evident to all men if they would take the time to prove it. Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus, which is your pledge of the resurrection, resurrection life for us. And we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks, Dave, for the message this morning. That was really wonderful and very encouraging. Um, Just wanted to mention, um, you've probably seen the chat going on down below the screen this morning and I hope that you've jumped in and said hi and let us know that you're there. That chat's going to be open for about half an hour after the message so that um, we can continue our uh, questions, encouragement, highs and haven't seen you guys for ages. You know, all that chat can continue on. Uh, I just really encourage you, if you didn't understand something in the message or if... Um, you have a question or an encouragement, something that you remember, just pop it in the chat and we can keep um, chewing over what we've learnt this morning. So what better way to finish Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, by singing Because He Lives. There's a line in there that's quite appropriate for today and it is um, this child or us We can face uncertain days because Christ lives. And isn't that true? Our days are very uncertain at the moment. We don't know whether we're coming or going, staying or whatever, but we can face these days because Jesus lives. sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he bled and died, to pay my pardon, an empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future, and life is worth the living just because he lives. How sweet to hold a newborn baby and feel the pride and joy. Assurance, the child can face certain days because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth living just because he lives. And then one day, I'll cross the river, I'll fight night's fine, a war with pain. And then a day gives way to victory, I'll see the lights of glory, and I'll know he reigns. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. 
Life is worth the living just because he lives. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living just because he lives. 33 says with great power the apostles continued to testify to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and God's grace was so powerfully at work in them all may we go in the power of the Holy Spirit to testify of the hope that we have because Jesus rose again as he said he would have a really blessed week reach out to someone if you need help or if they need help Let's stay connected as a church. God bless.